Hey guys, hello everyone. Good to see you all. We're playing today a game against Mr. Aladdin75. Hopefully, General Admiral Aladdin. So, let's hope for a, a C5 today. Sometimes, which is sometimes I'm ten, I tend to try these days sometimes but he's playing this very passive move e3 which i think should allow black a fairly comfortable game now kind of self-blocking this bishop on c1 i'm never afraid of d takes c5 because at the very least i have queen a5 check uh, regaining this pawn b3 Wow, okay. It's a very uncommon move in uh, fianchettoing this bishop when I have the bishop on g7, eyeballing his rook on, on a1 is definitely an un uncommon thing to do. So I'm thinking just to take on d4, or maybe I should even wait for him to play bishop b2. Let's take on d4, I'm kind of curious. So he actually pre-moved knight takes d4, fine. This means that he uh, lost at least some control over, over his center. So the obvious move would be to castle, but it also makes sense to try and open up the center right away with a move like d5 or even e5 in, in some positions. But the I don't like the move castling so much just because it, it gives him some time to develop his own pieces. So d5 is it's fairly tempting. Hmm. Let's try d5, let's see what, what happens. So one idea that I might have is that some in, in some positions to take on c4 and after he recaptures to go e5 and after the knight on d4 moves to trade queens and force him to take with the king. I feel like this would be a fairly nice achievement. For example right now he played bishop b2 so he's kind of allowing this idea. d takes e4 followed by e5 which is a very um, ambitious move. But I might even try to save a tempo to make a useful move like castling and only after he plays a move like bishop e2 then to take on c4. I think this makes sense. Let's castle. Now White is a little bit behind in the development of his king side. If he's now not playing bishop e2, yes. For example, he just played knight c3. So this idea of taking on c4 followed by uh, e5 doesn't make sense anymore because now he can recapture uh, with a rook. But once again, his king side is very much underdeveloped. So what I would really like to do is to play e5 and after the knight moves to go d4 and try to open very let's say very aggressively open up the center in order to be able to attack his uncastled king hmm. it's not entirely clear whether this is really going to work But it's surely very tempting, I must say, to play. I mean, at least for me, when the opponent is delaying his castling so much, I'm very much tempted to go on very kind of aggressive operations in the center. The other options are just to continue with moves like knight six, but then he, then he might be might be okay just taking on c6 and and playing this kind of position 
Another interesting option is to go at some position knight e4, just trying to open up this diagonal for the bishop. I might also include the move like queen a5, then knight e4, trying to use this pin. Actually, I think the move queen a5 makes quite a lot of sense here. Let's try it, because I'm still keeping the option of going e5 and d4. But also, but also this, these ideas of knight e4 are, I believe, are fairly annoying for him to face. And I also might combine the ideas of going knight e4 and the ideas to go e5, d4 very aggressively, like I mentioned before. For example, for example now. Now going e5 and d4 might be even stronger than it was before because now I'm slightly better developed. I already got my queen out, which means that the d8 square is vacated for my rook, which is definitely a good sign for me. I'm just too much tempted to do this. Let's, let's enjoy, let's play, let's just play it, see what happens. He will most probably, pr most probably play knight f3. Knight, uh, other moves, for example, knight b5, I think, would be premature. Okay, so knight f3. Now d4 is uh, kind of the logical continuation. I'm tr once again trying to sacrifice a pawn and get some open files against his king. And I don't think, I mean, he can try to kind of deny my presence, maybe not to take, maybe this is also the best move right now, which is not to take on d4, just move away the knight from c3, offering the exchange of queens. This is actually one drawback of not uh, playing this idea of e5 and d4 immediately, is the fact uh, that now with my queen and his queen being... Uh, on the same diagonal, wh whenever he moves his knight from c3, I will be almost forced to exchange queens. And it, it's not that exchanging queens is bad for black in any way, but it, it kind of take away, takes away at least uh, some of, of black's um, potential initiative here. So he plays knight d5. Once again, I, th I feel like I have to take. Yeah, so now, we have arrived at this position, which is, I think, still good for black. I mean, I, I, I did gain some space in, uh, in the last couple of moves. So I, basically, the, the obvious move is now to take on d5, but then I w it will be difficult for me to develop my knight, so I'm going to develop it right now. I'm not afraid of him taking on f6 uh, at all. And actually, on the next move, I think this would be a very nice option because after he recaptures, I have a knight before with a double attack on knight c2 and also the pawn on d5 uh, would be hanging. So I feel like white needs to be slightly careful here. The position is probably around, still around even. Probably black is having like a small initiative here because of uh, the fact that I'm already castled. And once again, I have ha having those advanced pawns in the center. But I feel pr probably if white plays some accurate moves here, it should be fine. And actually, I'm very curious to see after the game if I could have done something better earlier on. Now he takes on d4, which is a move I don't like at all for him. I, I feel like this is exactly what I wanted to open up this e file. I might even take on d5 and play this knight b4 move that I wanted to do earlier on. I think e takes d4 is almost a blunder here. It, I have so much, so many good options here actually. I can also take on d5 and then take right there and leave this pawn on d5 slightly weak. And 
definitely a, a pleasant choice at this point. Let's take on d5. I feel like this is the most aggressive way to continue. And now both knight b4 and knight takes d4 I think should be very good for me. I feel like knight b4 is the move which is the more, let's call it, um, the more difficult for my opponent to face. So I think I'll do... It's the more complicated move, definitely. But let's do it. I, I want to see how he reacts to this. Knight takes d4 would be, I think, just lead to a good position for black. Knight b4 kind of gives him this little question. How exactly are you going to deal with this knight c2 threat? One way is just to sacrifice this rook on a1, for example, to play d takes e5. Try to go for a lot of pawns versus, uh, versus the exchange. But I think this would be very good for white if his king would, was already castled. And then he might have two strong uh, pawns in the center, which might have some chances to advance and to create troubles. But because his king will be forced to stay in the center, my rooks will very quickly come into the central files and they will be ready to launch an attack against him. So um, the, if he doesn't want to sacrifice anything, he might play a rook c1. But then, at the very least, I have this tempo taking another pawn on a2. But also, the pawn on d5 is still hanging, so I can always capture it. So yeah, he, he decides to go for e5, which I think is probably the right thing to do. I mean, it's uh, then just to suffer in a worse position. So once again, th these two pawns definitely are um, something to be reckoned with. But once again, because his king is badly stuck on d1, um, I'm, I'm feeling fairly comfortable in this situation. But I need very quickly to, to start attacking these pawns before he manages to consolidate his position. One move which comes to mind is rook d8, just forcing the move to advance. And the more advanced these pawns get, they might potentially be weaker. So let's go rook d8. If he goes bishop c4, I have this resource, perhaps b5 at one point. So it's actually a fairly interesting position. I mean, it's it's. Um, I must say it's not obvious that black is having uh, the advantage here. I think the next couple of moves are going to be very critical to the assessment of the position. If white will be able to, let's say, uh, repel my, m my attacks or my attacking attempts, then it, it might be in actually in a very good position. But if, I will be, if I'll manage to destroy these, these two pawns, then I should have the winning position once again very much thanks to the fact that his king is badly stuck right there. So he took some time to play this move, which I, I thought was actually pretty much forced. So now I have this resource of breaking his center with f6 at, any, at, at, some, at some moment, but I, th I feel like I should develop first. Maybe bishop e6, maybe bishop f5. Hmm. Kind of having second thoughts if I should have gone for this position in the first place. F6 should, could be a good move, but this bishop c4 check. It's very annoying. I have to develop. So bishop e6 or bishop f5. I, I feel like these are my only serious options. Let's try bishop. Let's, uh, let's try bishop f5. So maybe my idea would be now to land some piece on the c2 square. Maybe rook d8 was even premature. I think I should have played bishop f5 straight away.
once again the position is complicated Now the, the obvious move for him is bishop c4, just to develop his uh, remaining piece. I also, there is one more resource here for me which might help me if I ever feel like I'm getting into troubles. Is to take on d6, force him to take back and then take his bishop on a1. It's kind of trading off pieces this way and hoping to recapture the pawn on d6 later on. I'm probably not going to do this at, at this position, but th that's, that's a resource which is kind of good to keep in mind. He plays bishop e2, which is kind of strange to me. Why not bishop on c4? Seems to me like just obviously a more active move. Now I g have some time to develop my rook, finally. g4, so this is the big deal. I don't think this is a big deal at all. I have a check right here if I want, which gains a tempo. I think that's a very good check. Because you cannot, yes, and now I have this idea to go rook c1, so I just need to move my bishop away. Even this is possible, but this, this perhaps helps him to centralize his I would like to take on b3, but then knight b3 controls the c1 square. Maybe bishop d3, maybe this is strong. Then I will be actually two exchanges up, because I will collect his rook in the corner. Huh. I need to be careful because these pawns in the long run might be quite annoying. Uh, actually, even this is possible. Bishop b1 just going for the spawn on a2, but I'm so low on time. I'm now below. I'm, I am now below one minute, so I, I, I just have to, I have to take a decision intuitively. So bishop e4. I just don't like the fact that he can take. Uh, Well, wow, that's that's a comp that's 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 a, that's a tough choice right there. I'm really uncertain. Uh, let's go bishop d3. I'm not really sure why exactly d3, but at least if he takes on d3. It's not helping him to centralize his knight like when he takes on e4. Even though the disadvantage of the move bishop d3 that it is less forcing. So he is now not forced to take on d3. Even though I still think it's actually the best move. And I, I really hope he will take on d3 because then we are going to have a very unusual position where I have two exchanges up, basically two rooks for two minor pieces. But the position is still complicated because these two connected pawns in the center are going to have uh, are going to make quite a lot of troubles uh, for me. He's taking a long time to think, but I, I really I don't see any good alternatives for white besides taking on d3. Any other move will either allow rook c1 or allow me to just... For example, a move like bishop b2 I think is very bad because it, it's, I will have rook c2 at any point. So he just goes back on d1. It's kind of offering the repetition. First of all, let's repeat the position once, just in order to get 10 seconds on the clock. It's never a bad idea. Ah, time is so low as always. Let's, let's do this. So, I, th I feel like objectively black is better, so I'm I'm not going to accept the draw, probably, but um, 
I'm so low on time, it's a tough decision whether to take the draw or not. So he's taking his time to think. So if he if he if he if he will do king d1, I'll probably take on e2, play rook c2, go for active play, and um, I will obviously risk losing. But the purpose of uh, these videos is not to be very objective, but uh, mainly to make it educational. So yeah, now you see in front of you this very position I was talking about uh, that I was hoping he will do. Quite uh, an amusing position. Let's try to break with f6. I have almost no time, but I, f I feel like I have to fight against his center. And in the worst case, I have this resource I've mentioned earlier with rook takes d6, even though I, I practically took it away now with my last move. I, I want to basically force him to play f4. Did I play my last move with one second on the clock? Jesus, I should be more careful. <laughs> So I want him to play f4 and then I can take on h2 with a gain of check. And in this kind of position, which is very sharp, every tempo uh, counts to something. The main drawback for me here is the fact that I have so much less time. I don't have almost no I have almost no time to consider my my actions. He can actually take on f6 actually at this point. And then check if f6 probably was a blunder. Take on it take on f6 and if I take on d6 bishop c4 check. And then whenever my king goes he can take on g7 with a gain of check and actually it will be a checkmate also very quickly. So if he takes on f6 I need to play some um, that's some awkward, m maybe even just to recapture on f6 and take on d6 just to destroy these uh, central pawns. Okay, knight f3 I have to take on e5 So if he takes check, okay, this is very sharp. I feel I feel like I have to go on f8 anyways, just not to. If I go on h8, I might be in some uh, checkmating uh, traps. Take on a7, wow. So he wanted to go knight g5. The, my last move is is just aimed against that, not no, nothing else. Basically, it's quite amazing that I have two exchanges up, but actually the initiative is is definitely uh, at white uh, disposal here. But at least he is low on time as well now. Oh no, d7, he just wins. I have no squares. Oh, that's, that's a checkmate. Oh my god, <laughs> uh, that was a funny game, but uh, th these last couple of moves were, were very critical. I want to see what the engine says. So the engine says that after bishop c2, king e1, he says I should just accept the draw. And he said that in this position actually black is better, which I, I kind of have this feeling I, I'm better. Pre and yes, f6 was just a terrible blunder. Um, rook takes d6. Yeah, th this very resource I was referring to. Um, I was referring to is actually just working, and I actually I've seen it. I, I um I've seen it. I I'm I'm not sure why I didn't play this. Um, yeah, f6 was a very bad blunder. Very bad blunder. 
and e4 is just 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 a very <laughs> i don't know uh, I, I mean the time trouble obviously uh, had his uh, has his own rule just missing checkmate in one move and just said that after bishop f6 the position is about equal even though it means basically nothing i think all three results are very possible at this point um <laughs> I think also in the opening I had a very serious uh, initiative. Um, the engine's already said by, by move number eight. Yeah, so th that's, that point was very interesting to me. I wanted to play e5 at this point, and then d4. And the engine says, um, let's see what the engine said. d4, it says it's okay, but not winning for black. Now he says knight takes d4, and he say and now he changes his mind and says black is actually already better after queen b6. And this move I didn't consider actually, but it's very strong. The idea is to prepare rook d8 and to pressurize along the d file his pinned knight. So probably e5 followed by d4 is is uh, already very good for black. I should have actually trusted my intuition. And after queen takes d4, now queen a5. Yeah, this makes actually a lot of sense. His queen on d4 is 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 very exposed to all kinds of attacks for my pieces. So uh, he says queen d2, rook d8. Yeah, this is already a very strong initiative for black. I think this is uh, um, this is already very good. So in the game, I just played uh, probably an inferior version of the same line. Yeah, so then you said I'm slightly better here, but I think, yeah, e takes d4 was a very bad blunder. You see the evaluation drops quite significantly. And probably knight b4 was too adventurous. Yeah, you see even the engine said that white is slightly better here. That was just too adventurous. Knight takes d4. And this position, as I mentioned, is just better for black. His king is stuck in the center. His pawn on d5 is very likely to get uh, under a very serious attack at some point with my error coming to d8. This would be the safe option, which I probably should have uh, gone for. So, uh, yeah, and later on, even though the, the, the good thing, though, is that we had a chance to get this very picturesque position where I have, where I have two exchanges down, but um, actually... The position is very complicated, even though the engine says it's minus one. I almost feel like it's, it's especially because of the fact that I had in the time trouble. This position is actually probably easier to play for white. It's he just needs to secure his bones and start advancing them. For black, it's more difficult to find active moves. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this game. Definitely, we learned something today, and I'll see you guys in the next videos. See you guys. Bye bye.